space is a phrase you'll hear being banded around a lot more these days. It refers to the recent commercialization of the space sector, where the state used to have a monopoly over the sector, private players are now coming in and playing an important role. One of those companies is a Finnish business, ISI, which is manufacturing and operating the small satellites. Now we're joined by Melanie Clift, ISI's account director for the UK and the European Space Agency. Melanie, welcome to the programme. Now, ISI is the first organisation in the world to successfully launch synthetic aperture radar satellites with a launch mass under 100 kilograms. So tell us about that. What do they do? How many are there? And why are you looking so attractive to commercial users? Great to, to be here. Thank you. Um, so what ISI have managed to do is to miniaturise the, the radar satellite, the radar spacecraft. So typically these satellites would be a ton or two tons and you would need an anchor customer in the background, such as a government, um, to be able to afford to launch such a large satellite. What ISI have done is they've miniaturized it to be sub 100 kilograms, so about the size of a small fridge. And what that means is the cost reduces and you can start to launch many more of these things. So what's exciting is that instead of a constellation of two or four, you can start to afford to have a constellation of 10, 12, 14, up to 20, 24 or so. And that gives you frequency of revisit. So you can come back and look at the same point on the earth again and again, multiple times a day, which hasn't been possible before. So when you say about a constellation and you say it will grow, how many have you got uh, in space now? Sure, so we've launched five satellites um, and we're using three at the moment, two were prototypes, and we're launching four more this year, so two in September, two in December, and then it's two every few months um, for the coming year or so. And we're aiming for a staging go to about 18, 20, 24, and then see where we go from there. But with that number of satellites, we should be able to look back, come back to the same spot on Earth every three hours, which is, uh, is very disruptive compared to what you can do currently. And is that the whole Earth or is that particularly targeted things that your, your customers might sure, ask you? Sure. So it is a, any point on Earth. We wouldn't image the entire Earth all the time as we go over. We would say that you would be able to, if there's a point you want to look at, uh, for example, oh, I don't know, something like illegal um, uh, fishing in Indonesia and you wanted to look over a particular area, multiple times per day or night, then we could do that. But we wouldn't be imaging the whole world simultaneously. Now, the, the cameras and the, the work that you're, you're doing from those satellites are incredibly high resolution, aren't they? And I mean, in 100 kilograms or less, you, you, you know, you're having to miniaturise everything. And are you getting the results that you might get from the ones we see from other satellites? Yes, we can. We're, we're really pleased that we can achieve 25 centimetre native resolution from our satellites and that's as much down to our processing um, capabilities uh, alongside the hardware in space as well so we're very pleased we can do that. Now one of the things that uh, you're getting this advantage of you're going over the same places you're able to take images and as I understand it you can do that day or night but also you can pick up changes as small as a couple of millimetres just explain that one to me. So yes, um, because uh, we're sending down a radar pulse, which is an active um, pulse down through the atmosphere, down to us, and then receiving the signal we receive back again, that means we can penetrate through cloud, we can penetrate through darkness in a way that's not feasible, not possible with an optical satellite. So that, that gives you your day and night capability. Then the millimetric change detection, which is um, using a technique called interferometry, means that you have your satellite in, an, in a precise ground repeat orbit, which means that you come back over again at exactly the same angle, um, with exactly the same viewing geometry when you look at the item uh, or the, the landmark that you were looking at before, so that you can um, calculate the difference in measurements between the two passes. So that allows you to see millimetric ground deformation over, for example, a dam where there may be some movement around the site um, or after an earthquake, you can see clearly what the difference um, in ground movement has been. 
So natural disasters are um, one application you'd want to be in. I see you list insurance companies or insurance businesses amongst your customers. So what, what do they want it for? Yeah. So for an insurance company, the disaster, post-disaster, pre-post comparison is useful. Um, obvious uh, things that lend themselves to radar our flood extent. Um, we can clearly see water on a radar image, so you can see the extent of the flood and how that's affected your customers. That's one very strong use case. So Melanie, I'm, I'm a customer now and you're up there doing these runs around the earth three or four times a day. How long do I have to wait till I can see the images? So that's, a, that's an excellent question. Um, what we're really keen to do at ISI is it's not just have the frequency of revisit, but have that super fast near real time delivery of the imagery. No point taking four images on, on a Tuesday if you don't get them till Thursday. So we want to get the imagery to you as soon as possible um, from the point of acquisition, through processing and out to our own customer. So really, um, we're looking at um, times in the minutes. We're demonstrating 15 minutes or so at the moment, and we want to make that as quick as possible. That's brilliant. Now, I know you're going to be speaking um, at the Farnborough Connect in one of the panels there. Yeah. And I think that's interesting because space is now something that people could actually think about getting jobs for. You've got one. What do you reckon on it as a career? Um, it's an amazing industry to work in. Um, from ISI's perspective, we're very fast moving. So it's refreshing to be somewhere where the, the rate of change and progress is so fast. Um, you can see the improvements, for example, getting from 20 meter resolution on our first satellite back in January uh, 2018 to now be at 25 centimeter resolution two years on. And there's a wealth of um, functions that sit behind that. So the more traditional things you might think of when you think of space, so engineering, absolutely, electronic engineering, mechanical engineering, all the different types of engineering, Software engineering, of course, because we have a large processing element, both on board and on the ground. Um, and then all the other functions, so sales, um, marketing, finance, HR, etc. We need all of those things as well. So it's just a perhaps a more exciting area um, to work in, but with all those traditional skills as well. Well, I think that's certainly a panel that's going to be worth watching on Farnborough Connect. Melanie, thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.